We'll just put in some gear oil now on the wheel bearings. Set them in here and drive them in. And we're trying our best to get this to go in straight. So we got this all the way in. We have a smaller one. We're making sure not to touch the actual bearings, but the, the outer housing and making sure we're not gouging the housing here. So I'm just putting a light coat of the Permatex on the outside of the seal, just so that it uh, seals up real nice for us. And then uh, we'll smear some in here as well when we um, finally install it. But we just want to, we don't want to glob it up too bad to where, you know, we're getting it in our wheel bearing or anything, but just uh, it's just going to help it seal a bit better. So we're just driving this in as straight as we possibly can. Just uh, want to make sure we don't get any debris in that wheel bearing, so we'll probably just cover this with a bit of a rag and get it good and flush. Now we're just putting a little bit more of this Permatex right here where it would leak out if we did have a problem and then this should help keep everything nice and dry. Okay so here's our 31 spline Moser axle and we're just going to slide it right through here through the bearing and then into the housing. This has been cleaned as well and we're careful not to put too much pressure on the bearings or anything as we're sliding it through and then as it gets close it's going to slide it into the traction lock just how we pulled it out and you just want to make sure that the spines are all correct it's got a feel it there it goes there we go so now we're in and as you can see we're going to we're going to pass, we're going to put it in here far enough where we can see the little notch and that's where we're going to throw in our uh, C-clip. Okay, now on the C-clips, if you look closely, there's a flat side and a rounded side. You want to put the rounded side facing out and the flat side so as if they were touching like this, they'd be completely flat, okay? Now, so we can move this axle shaft back and forth and we can see can you see where the axle is coming in? So you just put it right there where it's completely on and get it with both fingers. And All right, so the axles are in. We put on the C-clips and then we put pulled the, the axles out just barely until the C-clips disappeared into the housing. Now we're going to put our post in. Okay, this is just like it just slides right into place. Make sure that you do it with the screw hole on the outside. Put your hand in there to catch it. Okay, so we're gonna line that up. I'm gonna start to put our screw in. And there we go, it's in place. Now we're just gonna tighten this down. This is very important because uh, it's called sometimes a grenade pin because without this, this will grenade your entire traction lock. Okay, so we're just tightening this down with the 8 millimeters socket. Just getting it good, nice and snug. There was a little bit of Loctite on here because it was a new bolt. So I'd recommend if, it, uh, if, you ha if it's a used one to put some Loctite on there so that this doesn't come out. But just get it good and snug and that'll keep this uh, pin in here. And Hopefully everything's ready to go now. All right, we're just adding some royal purple in here right now. Kind of testing our uh, good old pinion seal too, I guess you could say at the same time. It looks like we're good. Okay, so we're just using a coat of Permatex instead of the paper gasket. We're just kind of going around in a circle here and making sure that it's we're going to do one bead so that the actual cover smashes it nice and flat for us. And we're going to go on thick. 
All right, so now we're just wrapping some Teflon tape on our new drain plug and fill plug for our Ford Racing cover. And this is just recommended to help it to, I guess, keep from leaking and to help keep it seizing up too. This. All right, we're just setting this cover down now. Hopefully everything's gonna smash in just great for us. And I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on it. Smash it like a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Looks like it's starting to come out good. So now we're torquing down the differential uh, cover bolts. And they said 20 to 25 foot pounds. So that's what I'm doing and I'm going in a kind of a star pattern. Make sure it's even. And something very important to remember if you have this kind of a girdle on your rear end, these are the load bolts. What these will do is you will tighten them down until they barely touch those main cap, uh, the bearing caps. You do not want to put too much pressure on these. It can cause damage to it. So you want to just tighten these down until they barely touch, then torque them to five foot pounds. Okay, so I'm, I'm tightening these bolts down. Okay, I'm going to torque them to five foot pounds. Okay, that's not very much because you don't want to put too much pressure. Remember that these now have all the pressure of these bolts are helping push on those main caps. I'm going to do them evenly. So with these ones just barely touching at five foot pounds, now there's these other jam nuts that go around them and that we're going to tighten to 20 foot pounds. Okay, as you can see, I have the car on the ground, and I'm just uh, topping off the fluid level here in the differential. I poured most of the fluid in while the cover was off, while the whole axle was off the car. And um, the way that you fill up a differential is you take out the fill plug, which is on the opposite side of this housing. It's back up here. And uh, you fill it up until it overflows. Now I have a Ford Racing girdle on here, and it's pretty much the same process but this one comes with a fill plug and a drain plug and what you do is you take the fill plug off here and the fill plug around the back and you add fluid on this side until it starts coming out the back of the regular fill plug and that way you know you're at your full level uh, don't fill it up until it comes out of this uh, fill plug or you'll have too much fluid in there and you could potentially blow out one of the seals. But according to the instructions from Ford, that's the way they recommend it with this cover is to fill fluid from the fill plug here until it starts coming out of the fill plug, the factory fill plug on the other side. All right, one thing to know about switching out axle shafts, <clears throat> and this happened not only on this car but on some other Mustangs I've done. You can see where the uh, this brake caliper has rubbed against the the disc brake and so what's that cause what causes that is the axle shafts may be a hair shorter or longer than the factory ones and we're talking maybe even just a little bit and so what happens is it pushes the caliper over and then you're rubbing the brake so what we do to cancel that or what I've been able to do at least is put spacers on the back side of the caliper where the the bolts mount to push the caliper out more just use spacers washers you know just make sure that they're all all the same I'll show you what I did you can see I just put on two of these washers right here um, on each side I went down to the hardware store and bought them they're all the same width you just stack them until you know the problem goes away and this was like 80 cents for 12 of them so it's a relatively cheap fix but um, on this side it doesn't look like it happened 
quite as bad but the other side was completely rashed and it can happen on the inside or you know inside or the outside so you got if you hear some some rubbing take a look because on my brother's Mustang bullet it had the the shafts were a little bit uh, I guess they were shorter so it was scraping on the inside and it was kind of hard to tell what was going on until we looked behind there washers on the back sides of all of the studs to push the disc out a little bit so um, that's just something to know about and I uh, hope it doesn't happen to you but it might and in this case it did and, and so that's that's something we did to correct the problem but you might be able to find something better than that